Good evening, everybody, and welcome back for your second election night update. My name is Ivana Herenkew, and right now I am joined by two of our reporters, Mike Kaysen and Howard Koplowitz. And Mike Kaysen here is at the Tommy Tuberville campaign party. Doug jo- uh, excuse me, Howard is at the Doug Jones campaign party. And uh, that Tommy Tuberville party is in Montgomery. The Doug Jones one is in Birmingham. So we have uh, both of them at those different campaign headquarters right now. We're still watching results come in. This race is uh, has not been called. And from our official count that we've got on ale.com, it looks like only 2% of the vote is in so far. So not really anywhere close, it seems like, to calling this race right now. In that 2%, we do know Tommy Tuberville is leading about 57% to Doug Jones's 42%. So, Howard, I'm going to let you go first here. Tell us what it's like at this Doug Jones party. Where are you and uh, what is the mood there? Um, I'm in Pepper Place in Birmingham. Uh, the doors opened around 30 minutes ago. Uh, Doug Jones hasn't come out yet. Um, the campaign says that he will be speaking eventually to the supporters here. Um, but there, it, it, it's still a little, little bit light right now. Um, the, the tables aren't full yet. Um, and just one other thing about about this um, this election uh, watch party. Um, they're, they're being very strict about COVID protocols. Everyone, um, you know, their social distancing uh, guidelines being enforced. Um, they're taking temperatures of everyone who walks in. Um, and they're making everyone who comes in jot down uh, their contact information in case the camp- in, in case uh, the campaign or, or health officials had to do contact tracing uh, in case, you know, God forbid any cases uh, spread it up here. So we know that there is a lot of uh, those uh, coronavirus enforcements happening at that Doug Jones campaign up party at Pepper Place. Howard, we know uh, earlier today you said you heard from somebody in the campaign that earlier Senator Jones seemed to be in, in pretty good spirits. Now, we know he has held the seat for just a little bit less than three years. He took it in a special elec- election in December 2017, running against uh, Republican candidate Roy Moore at the time. So, Howard, it, it, what tell us more about what you heard about how the senator was feeling earlier today and uh, where is he watching those results right now um right now he's with his family just watching the election results um early all day today he was in birmingham making campaign stops um since around about seven in the morning uh basically concentrating um hitting a few spots in birmingham right now um He's relaxing, and from what the campaign tells me, he's in a he's in a good mood with his family, uh, watching the returns. Um, his son Carson just spoke to supporters um, uh, a few minutes ago, and we're waiting to hear from uh, Doug Jones eventually. Now, Mike, uh, in contrast to that, you are in Montgomery at the Tommy Tuberville campaign party. We know that uh, former Auburn head coach Tommy Tuberville, he is uh, he has not held a political office before he but he is uh, been polling ahead of Senator Jones. So tell us what the mood is like at that Tommy Tuberville party, Mike. Well, I'd say the mood's very confident. They've uh... Uh, Mr. Tuberville came out and he spoke to the press about, uh, I guess, about six o'clock. And he was, you know, he wasn't, he didn't express overconfidence. He said he didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, he said he felt like he'd done a good job getting his message across. Uh, interestingly, he said he got a call from President Trump about two thirty today, and uh, he said he told President, he said President Trump could barely talk because he was hoarse. But he said he told him, uh, "I'll tell you one thing, Mr. President, you you got the vote out whether they liked you or whether they didn't." People came out to vote, uh, but he he was pretty low key overall, and said that uh, he said that if he wins, he's going to be senator for all Alabama. It's not just uh, people who voted for him, which you know I guess you would expect him to say that. But he struck a pretty low key tone overall. And that's something that we haven't really seen from Tommy Tuberville so far. We know that he has been very pro-Trump. He has said that he is going to follow President Trump's agenda. So we haven't heard uh, him make as much of the I'm here for all Alabamians type of speech that we sometimes hear from politicians. Right. Right. Well, yeah, we heard some of that tonight. And um, 
after uh, after Mr. Tupperville uh, went back went back up to his room to watch returns, uh, we had some speakers. Mo Brooks spoke, uh, Congressman from Huntsville, Terry Lathan, the chairman of the Republican Party, and the you know the theme was very confident that uh, that Doug Jones is, is going to be defeated tonight, and it was uh, very confident. Uh, very confident room here at the Renaissance Hotel. Uh, well, we know I mean, that about, I'm sorry, Mike, we know about 10 minutes after seven that the Associated Press did call the race, the uh, presidential race in Alabama, saying that Trump had taken Alabama. Uh, but again, that was the presidential race. We're still waiting on the Senate results. I'm looking right now. It looks like we've got about uh 3% of our expected vote in the Senate race. We have 55% going for Tuberville and 44% going for Jones. So uh, we we have that's what we have so far. Again, that's only about 4.25% of precincts reporting, and that's about 3% of that expected vote. So it uh, it seems like some of these votes are coming in pretty slowly. We, we know that a lot of times that's how it happens, and then they sometimes just all roll in at once. Uh, Mike, do you know if uh, Tommy Tuberville is thinking this is going to be a long night or if he's thinking that uh, this race might be called earlier you know he was real he was real cautious about saying anything about that he just ba basically said i don't know and uh said i hope we win he didn't you know didn't say any you know say anything about like he was overconfident or anything like that so he didn't really address that he, he just said i don't know and he said one factor is there's so many people that turned out to vote uh, introduce a little bit more un uncertainty into it, I guess. But I'm sure he's confident because he's been running ahead in the polls and, uh, you know, I don't think there's anything that's happened to, to indicate otherwise. <laughs> We know we know that, uh, Mike, from your reporting, that uh, Tuberville did speak with President Trump today. You mentioned that a few minutes ago. Howard, do we know anything about uh, Senator Jones? Has he spoken with any national politicians today ahead of this race? Uh, not that I've heard of. Um, it's just uh, one thing to keep in mind is uh, Joe Biden sent out an email or um, Joe Biden's campaign sent out an e email a couple days ago um, encouraging um, voters to, here in Alabama to vote for Doug Jones. Um, so that's just something interesting to look out for, depending on how the results go tonight is, is what's Doug Jones's future should you know he lose and Joe Biden win, um, but yeah, I haven't heard anything about national politicians uh, reaching out to him today. Well, that's an interesting point you make about the Joe Biden campaign sending out that email uh, a couple of days ago or uh, maybe a couple even of hours ago saying for voters to vote for Doug. Now, we know again that Alabama has already been called for uh, President Trump, and uh, but we're still waiting on these Senate results. So we know, let, let's shift a little to these coronavirus measures happening at these parties. Howard, we know you said the measures are really strict at the Doug Jones party. There are temperature checks. There are masks. Uh, being enforced there, social distancing being enforced. Mike, what is the scene like in regarding coronavirus measures in Montgomery at that Tuberville party? Well, I got here about four o'clock before uh, nobody else was here but the media. And, uh, you know, there were pl plenty of signs up made it very clear that there were going to be strict uh, mass requirements, social distancing. Uh, and uh, But that, that seems to be being ignored for the most part. I mean, they may be checking people when they come in, but I'd say most people other than the media uh, who are in the in the party are not wearing masks. Well, and Mike, we know you and I were together a couple months ago at the end of the at the run runoff during the primary, and uh, we were both at that Tommy Tuberville party, and there were quite a few people there, and we saw that once people got into that ballroom, most of the attendees there took off their masks and seemed to act like everything was normal. Is that kind of what you're seeing right now, or are you seeing people follow those precautions a little bit more? That's kind of what I'm seeing right now, and uh, of course, it, uh, as we get later in the evening and people begin to cluster closer together and, and you know, Mr. Tubble will comes out to speak. Uh, we'll see. But, but, uh, as you say, last time it was the, uh, all the guidelines were pretty much ignored and, uh, it's kind of looking that way tonight, but we'll see.
We, uh, we have in that same AP results, we have a little bit of an update. 5% of the expected vote is in in this U.S. Senate race. Uh, Tommy Tuberville leading 60% to Jug Jones is 39%, about 40% if we round. So 40% to, to 60%, that margin is growing a little bit. Uh, Tommy Tuberville in the lead with 5% of the expected vote in. So again, race has not been called, but that is what we're looking at right now. You can find all of the latest on these numbers numbers on ale.com on our website or on our social media pages. Mike Howard, thank you so much for joining me and giving our viewers a little bit of an insight into what those parties is like. I know that you had to each kind of retreat to some more quiet areas to do this video, but I appreciate uh, you giving us a little bit of a scene setter from there. Thank Thanks you for having us. Thank you so much, guys, and everybody watching. We're going to be back at 9, uh, hopefully with a little bit more results here. So, gentlemen, again, thanks for joining me. Everybody watching, we will see you in an hour.